What up, what up? Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys this workflow that I came up with whenever I started Greyboxing in Cinema 4D, but still want to use Nanite inside of Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So before we get started, there's a few things we need to make sure that we have set up inside of Cinema 4D. I'm using the latest version right now, 26. And so what I'm going to do is come over here to where it says Edit Render Settings. I'm going to click on this and I already have my scene set up 1920 by 1080 just going to do 30 fps for this but the really important thing is for our render type we want to make sure it's standard we don't want to use physical or redshift and the reason that we're going to be sticking with standard is because we're going to be using quixo bridge to bring in mega scans assets and it has to be on standard because we want to bring in standard materials in here for when we bring it over to unreal engine and so everything else looks good right here so i'm actually going to exit this out and then i'm going to open up quixo bridge so I have Quixel Bridge open right now. We have some Mega Scans assets in here, and it looks like we have a brand new one right here, the Hard Quarry Shore. So let's use this one right here for an example. So I'm not going to get too particular, just for our tutorial sake. So maybe let's say we want to use this Beach Rock Formation. I'm going to click on this, and then down here in the lower right hand corner, you'll see that it says 8K resolution, which is gonna be extremely large, especially when we're gray boxing our level out in Cinema 4D. Remember, we're gonna be doing our final polish in Unreal. So I kinda just wanna lay everything out in Cinema. And for that, I don't wanna use too many polygons because it's gonna slow everything down. And so what I'm gonna actually do is come over here to 2K resolution, and I'm just gonna download this one right here. And let's say maybe one to add like another formation just to add some variety in there. So let's say maybe this one right here, this beach boulder. Again, I'm going to get on the 2K resolution. I'm going to click on download and I'm just going to let these download. And maybe let's do just maybe a standard texture as well. So let's see if we can find like a ground texture in here. Something that we could use. Maybe something like, okay, let's say this one right here just for time's sake. So I'm going to download this one as well. Make sure again, I'm at 2K resolution and I'm going to click download. So while this is downloading, I want to show you guys an important step to make sure whenever we export this out, it's going to go to Cinema 4D. So down here in the lower right hand corner, you'll see this little button right here and it has like three sliders on it. If I left click, it's going to have download settings and export settings. I want to click on export settings and I want to make sure my export target is Cinema 4D as it is. But as you can see, there's a whole plethora of different DCCs and programs that you could use. But for this particular case, I want to make sure that it has Cinema 4D and I want to make sure it is installed. So I'm going to go back and then I'm going to see, it looks like everything is downloaded. So I'm going to take everything in one full swoop. So I'm going to click on this one. Then I'm going to hold down the control key and scroll down here. Let's see what was the other one. I want to grab this one as well. And there was one more up here. So let me see. And I'm holding down the control key, by the way, to make sure I select it. And you'll see it on the right hand side here. And I'm going to do this one right here, beach border. So I'm going to left click on this one. And then I'm just going to click export. And as long as you have Cinema 4D opened up, as I showed you guys how to do with the standard, everything should come over and the materials and everything will already be adjusted. So now let me exit this out. And there we go. So now we see our rock formation inside of our scene. If I scroll up down here, I see our materials are down here as well. I'm not going to miss with any type of adjustments. It looks like they're shiny, but everything's going to be replaced anyway. So what I'm going to do from here is I'm just going to build like a simple terrain, just a ground plane for us to have something to lay on. So maybe let's make this 20,000 by 20,000 like so somewhere around there. Maybe our height like 200. Come down here to where it says border at sea level. I'm going to click that off just so we have a little bit flatter, something like that. And then what I'm going to do from here is actually add in a cloner. So I'm going to come up to MoGraph, come down to cloner, and I'm just going to actually add these rocks into here like so. And then once I have this in here, I'm going to come back over to cloner. Let me drag this up down here and I'm going to click on object. And then let's say we want to have it on our object, which will be our landscape. So I'm going to drag this down here under object. And you can see it's starting to scatter around. Everything is kind of sideways, but let's actually add a lot more in here. Let's say like 800, something like that. I'm gonna come over here to transform and then I'm gonna rotate these. So the right side up like so. So let's say negative 90 and there we go. So we have about 500 assets in here in which I'm only using them at a 2K resolution. And so everything is moving pretty good in my viewport here and everything. So the last step from here, I'm just actually going to add the beach texture on the ground here. So if I scroll up, 
let's say we want to do the ground one which i believe was this one right here just going to select it on there like that and then down here inside of my tiling let's see what it looks like like 50 by 50 somewhere around there should be suffice so i'm not going to sit here and do like a picture perfect frame but i just trying to put something in here so you guys can see the example that i'm going to show you here so let's say we're happy with how everything is looking in the scene and we're ready to bring it over to unreal engine so what i'm going to do on my keyboard i'm going to hit Control d so i'm going to hit Control d like so and that's going to bring up this panel down here in the lower right hand side and what we want to select is cineware so i'm going to select cineware like so and then i'm going to click this on for polygon cache i'm going to click on material cache Make sure I have everything selected here, which I'm happy with everything here. So I'm just going to save out a Cinema 4D project, and then I'm going to import this into Unreal Engine. So I'm going to come over here to File, come down to Save Project as, okay? So I made a new folder called Tutorial, and I'm just going to name this one Beach, like so. I'm just going to save it out, and now I'm going to go over to Unreal Engine. So I'm just going to come over here, and I already have Unreal Engine set up right here. And so the first step we want to do in here, I have a brand new project file set up. I'm just going to import over my Cinema 4D project. But first, I need to enable the C4D Datasmith importer. And so if I come over here to where it says edit and then come down here to plugins, it's going to bring up this plugin panel. I'm just going to type in C4D like so. And I'm going to click this on and then it's going to ask me to restart it. And so I'm going to restart it. So it enables the plugins there. OK, so we have everything enabled. So now I can close this out. And I'm actually going to delete some of this stuff in here, like so. And that's going to leave it really bare basic, nothing too crazy. So the next step from here, I'm going to click on this little sphere with the plus symbol, right? I'm going to click left click, come down here to Datasmith, and I'm going to do file import. And now from here, I'm just going to go back to my desktop, look out for that tutorial folder, click on Beach. This is my Cinema 4D project file. So I'm going to open this up. And then I'm going to leave it in the default content panel right here, which is what you see down here. And so I'm just going to click OK. And next it's going to come up with the Datasmith import options in which I'm going to leave everything selected. So again, I'm just going to click import. And here we go. So now we have our Cinema 4D project inside of Unreal Engine. So this is a question I get a lot. As you can see inside the viewport, everything is white. And people ask me a lot, like, how come it didn't bring my textures over? It actually did. So if we wanted to use Cinema 4D textures, all you have to do is come down here into your content browser, come down here to materials. And this is where all our materials are. And actually, I'm going to save everything before I proceed. And let's say I want to start with this one up front here. So the beach boulder, I'm going to double click on it. And that's going to bring up our material window here. And all you have to do is turn off the use reflectance color like so. And there you go. So now you can see your texture in here. I'm not sure why it leaves it on by default, but now we see our textures in here. But for this tutorial, I want to use my nanite geometry because I want to take full advantage of that. And so I'm going to show you guys how we can replace these 2K geometry textures with our nanite 8K ones. And so I just want to show you guys that tip right there. So I'm actually just going to save it. But let me actually open up Quixel Bridge inside of Unreal Engine 5. And so the Quixel Bridge inside of Unreal Engine 5 is different than the standalone version because with Unreal Engine 5, it's now built in and it has everything already set up to use Nanite. And so in order to get there, I'm actually going to come back here. We have our little cube with the plus symbol. I'm going to left click and then I'm going to come right here, which is Quixel Bridge. So now this is Quixel Bridge inside of Unreal Engine. The way that you can tell it's inside of Unreal Engine is because we have the little Unreal logo in the top left hand corner. And so from here, what I want to do, and this is actually cool, I want to look up the code for the stuff that I downloaded before in the other version of Quixel Bridge. And so if you look over here inside the outliner, let me actually drag this over a little bit so we can see it better, like so. You can see that we have these little codes here. So if I pull this down and let's say, let me select this one right here. Let's say we want to replace this one first, like so. And so we can see that we have this code here, U-K-O-P-E-B-L-S. And so if I type that here inside of my search, I'm going to type in U-K-O-P-E-B-L-S and hit enter. Now you can see it actually brought up that piece of geometry, but we have to re-download it because it's going to download it separately for Unreal Engine 5 than the standalone version. But if I click on this right here, you can see right here in the bottom right hand corner, it's going to show as medium quality. But what I want to click on is Nanite. And so this is going to take a few minutes to download. I'm just going to download this one right here like so and let this one proceed. 
Okay, so it looks like everything had downloaded. And so the next step from here is just adding it into our scene. So as you can see down here, this actual add button turned blue. So that means that we can now add it into Unreal Engine. So if I actually select this, it's gonna make a folder inside of our content browser that says Megascans. It's gonna make a 3D folder here for us as well. And so I see it just popped in. So I'm actually gonna close this out. And as you can see right here, we have all of our nanite stuff in here so it's going to take a second to prepare the shaders and everything but we have our ak textures in here we have our material in here as well and then we have our geometry so in order to replace the 2d version that we brought in from cinema 4d all we have to do is actually replace it with this nanite one by selecting and dragging so let me show you how to do that and so let me come over here because i actually want to do it to a whole bunch of them here so everything should be an order over here in your row outliner it should be in alphabetical order so if i start up here at the top like so and then i'm just going to scroll down and make sure i catch all the ones that i need so it looks like it stops right here so i'm going to hold down the shift key left click and then i'm going to drag up my details panel right here and right here where it says static mesh and let me actually zoom in on this so we can actually see it better so i'm going to zoom in on here so we can see the change happen in real time so i'm going to left click and replace this static mesh right here and boom there we go we replace the static mesh so now it's using the nanite mesh but we're still using a 2k texture in which i'm just going to left click this one right here and drag this over as well and now everything is replaced so i'm going to go through that process again but this time i'm going to do it inside the wireframe view so we can actually see how dense the mesh is compared to the one that we brought in from cinema 4d so if i come over here where it says lit i'm going to come down here to wireframe and i'm using a 2d version again this one's the one from cinema 4d so i still have everything selected i'm going to click my nanite geometry select over here where it says static mesh i'm just going to replace it and boom, you can see how dense the geometry came on all of them in there. And so there we have it. So this is my workflow and tip for how I build stuff out in Cinema 4D using very low res geometry, bring it over to Unreal and replace it with the Nanite ones. So hopefully this helps a lot of you Cinema 4D artists out there kind of understand the workflows better. I know a lot of times I like personally to gray box my level out inside of Cinema 4D and I don't want to get too heavy in there because it will slow down the viewport and it's not easy to work in. And so what I do there, I build everything out in low resolution and then once I come over to Unreal Engine, I easily swap it out with the higher resolution geometry and textures as I just showed you. So if this tip helped you out, make sure you leave me a comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new leave me a big thumbs up helps with the algorithm and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i catch you guys in the next video i see you soon take care what up what up Wimbush here